Right. Um, you can pay money to SEO and all this stuff at the end of the day if you're not answering the phone the right way, and then you're losing conversions on the back end. To me, this is one of the most pivotal points of a business. Hello, and welcome to the Preferred Contractors Podcast, where we give you actual steps to grow your contracting business so you can grow it to the level in which you want it uh, and how you want to build that business. Uh, I'm your host, Jordan Harrison, and in today's episode, we're going to get into what is probably the most crucial pivotal point from getting a customer from the you know the buyer's end into uh, the first human touch point inside your business, that first actual connection with a human being um, that has to be crucial in order to get that conversion or even just the start of getting that booked appointment in the conversion and, and creating that best customer experience possible. So today we have an expert on that, a specialist, a, an amazing lady that I've actually worked with personally, seen the work that she does and her team does uh, over at Dedicated Office, Adi Capuzano, said it right? You did. Thank Pretty you. Pretty close. <laughs> uh, she's going to walk us through all this stuff and, and really help you guys. If you're going to build it eternally or hire outside, what would be the best way to go for you? And so, yeah. So, Adi, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So I have to, um, I, I want to point out and talk first, like obviously I've had experience working with her when I had my marketing company. Um, I firsthand listened to the calls that her, her team has done and you want to talk about some of the most professional work and they're in there. Most of them are in the States. You're in Texas, right? Everybody is. We're in DFW. Yeah. We're in North Texas and everybody's local and everybody we work with personally hands-on in our office. We don't outsource outside of where we can touch. See, and I think that is, and that's something that people res respect and do it. There's a lot of outsourcing going on outside of the country and we get that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, this to me is worth, um, you know, it's worth conversions. It's worth doing to me Google ads versus like Facebook ads, right? Better, better quality on the front end. So uh, yeah. absolutely amazing. So talk real quick about um, how you got started. Like what got you into starting a dedicated <laughs> office? Like what was that journey like? Well, actually, I mean, it was a long time ago, many moons ago. I've been doing this for 22 years. So um, personally, in my life, I've been in two things, martial arts and call center. And so um, the idea came about in about the year 2000. And really, there were no virtual offices at the time. But I was in New York. And, and the thought was, hey, wouldn't it be cool if people in home businesses and less prestigious states, which I thought at the time, now I'm a Texas girl, but, uh, you know, they could have a New York address. And so we built the business and it evolved. Um, I had a strong background in sales. If we were going to give people an address and give them a phone number and I was going to take calls, well, I didn't want to just take messages. I wanted to actually give a great experience and just Im embed into the business. So we evolved over the years. We provided dedicated teams. So we always wanted a business to have a seamless experience and that our team is their team. So nobody ever knows we're a service. We've always been an answering service, but we're like the anti-answering service because we actually provided one call resolution where we booked appointments, placed orders, explained products and services, and just provided an extension of that office. Um, over the years, we relocated to Texas 11 years ago, um, restructured a few things within the business, and then we actually started to expand into an outbound call center. So after years of inbound, where we really were just receiving their inbound calls, inbound marketing, just day to day, um, we decided to venture out into the outbound market so that we could partner with marketing agencies as a retention tool. So every business invests in marketing. And the way that I saw it was the best way to leverage your marketing dollars is with quality customer service on the front end, because the, the easiest way to waste your marketing dollars is not following up with people or not picking up the phone, which everybody <laughs> knows. And it feels like such an obvious thing. But when you're running jobs and doing estimates and, and managing your guys, like it's a lot. And that's the probably the easiest thing to fall off when you're running so many different facets of your business but it's actually the most important part of your business because those are your customers and those are your prospects and those are your growth opportunities. Yeah. And I, you say that I, I, marketing, marketing companies, there's always that, especially in the home service world, like you got marketing companies and lead gen companies out there, but like at the end of the day, when they're doing all that busy stuff and they let that stuff fall off and they're going, well, we're bringing leads, but we're not converting. And I'm like, yeah, because it's that, that point right there, 
yeah. it's not working because you know, you, you have terrible customer service on the initial contact. So like whoever's there, they got to have a good day every day. They can't have a bad day and answer your phones. That is so true. And it just becomes that weak link that, that, you know, breaks the cycle. Cause you feel like you're doing everything right. You certainly feel like you're spending a lot of money to get business in, but if you just have that one piece off, it's going to change everything. And we've worked with businesses where the owner's, were fantastic and the customers had a great experience from the estimate to the execution to the diagnosis to the repair or the replacement but if their front office girl was not on point i mean it changes everything uh i agree totally i agree and we um mike i'll talk about my experiences all the time because i'm a homeowner i'm i am the target audience for most contractors because you know median income um single household i have you know have I need painting done? I need new flooring. I yep. got plumbing issues. But anyways, we called for like a garage door to get fixed the other day, and I, t- I tell the story probably every podcast. Um, but the most important thing was the initial call. Somebody answered the phone, mm-hmm. and they were super nice and polite, and they got somebody booked. and And that person had a job open up next thing. They were here before noon. Called at eight a.m. before noon. Garage door was fixed. Um, yeah. And like so, that's like that's the seamless process that they're missing. Had that lady been rude to me. Mm-hmm. probably would have called somebody else um even oh, though just... yeah even though it was in a hurry so awesome so let's get into let's get into kind of the whole process of everything and where contractors are making mistakes where they can improve so let's start with just the initial phone call first because i think that's most important um we're kind of the biggest mistakes contractors are making just on the initial greeting of a call well i think first and foremost uh the obvious is when they don't answer and the greeting is the voicemail so that's like the first mistake is you know missing calls because they are forwarding calls to their cell phone they don't have a proper staff in place or that staff might be on a call or just have too many things going on or on lunch or whatnot but on the initial call some mistakes that i see all the time is Whoever's answering the phone has it forwarded to their cell. So they're driving, there's background noise, they're distracted, they're unable to write down information and and get it, get it accurately because you need contact information. You need to know who you're talking to. You're going to need their address, what their issues are in order to set up the estimate appointment for success and even get it on the books. You need to have your calendar handy. So I think a lot of people think that the phones is something that they can just kind of like take with them and manage wherever they are. But the truth is, if you don't have the proper setting, you're probably not going to have the best conversation. So answering the calls, um, it's important to have all your resources available and have clarity in what you're going to say, how you're going to handle that call. And then of course, you know, not tons of distractions and really hazards (laughs) in the background because you don't want to be driving 80 80 miles an hour down a highway trying to jot down somebody's address so that you can, you know, go, go check out their problem. Um, and I, and I think also when you are multitasking, sometimes people just answer hello, or they don't really even say their company name. And it, it just, um, doesn't set the best tone for professionalism when a customer is looking for somebody to come into their home, because, your home is your, most people is your number one, most expensive asset. It's your biggest investment. And it's really important that when you do hire someone to do work in your home, that they're going to be trustworthy and reputable and that they're going to treat you well. And you're not going to feel like you made a bad investment because that's frustrating for any homeowner. You want to make sure that you have contractors that you can trust, that you can refer, that you can use again if you need to, and that, you know, it's money well spent. And and it's you say uh, we had another guy on Jonathan Buhider, um of Loyal Home Services. I think he's in Texas actually. It, amazing dude, but he talked about like he said the the one the one thing that he trains his guys on is you have to make people feel comfortable when they come to your home. It's their castle. This is yeah. the most vulnerable you're going to be because like this is the most private space is my house. It's going to be messy. It's going to have kid stuff everywhere, <laughs> um, and I'm inviting you in. So if you're not professional, like that's talk about how uncomfortable that is. Um, and I've had those bad experiences. We won't get into them now. <laughs> you can listen to other podcasts where I talk about the the plumbers that installed my hot water heater. It was terrible. Oh yeah. uh, I wasn't even here, but it was terrible. Yeah. So I, I agree. And I think that, so in terms of, let me ask you this. And so to fix that problem, because that's a major problem. I called 14 people to get landscaping 14, only three actually answered the phone. Only four returned my call mm-hmm. two days later. Um, and, you know, the guy that called and was friendly, whatever, ended up winning my business. But besides that, what's the best way? And I know as you grow, you can't hire somebody internally always. But let's say you want to go from beginning to end to fix that. What's the best way to start, right? 
uh, if you're a one or two man team? So there's always the option of hiring in-house staff. Um, I find that it's not always the most efficient and I'll tell you why. So call, you can't anticipate when your calls are gonna come in. You can't organize a schedule of when people are going to inquire with your business. Um, and so you have to have available coverage. So if you're hiring somebody, one or two people to work in your office, you're going to need other things for them to do because the phones aren't enough to justify a full-time salary. And the hours that they work are probably not gonna cover all of the hours that you might have business coming in. Um, having an office person is great, but depending on if you market, the volume of the inquiries coming in, the leads that need to be followed up, if you are investing in direct response marketing or you get website inquiries or Google inquiries, um, you know, you want to make sure that nothing falls through the cracks because the worst thing, worst, almost even worse than missing them yourselves is investing in somebody and then still having them missed. So my preference and recommendation, and of course I have a professional bias, is outsourcing to a company that can provide you with a solution that will cover all of the potential hours that somebody might call you. For example, we're open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. to make sure that we cover a nice long day so that if somebody wants to reach out before work, on their lunch, after work, or just throughout the day, there's always gonna be somebody available. Um, one or two people, great. But uh, on, our, on our side, what we do is we assign a dedicated team of six or seven people. So that way, lunch breaks, sick days, shift changes, um, other calls in, we always have someone available and trained to answer the call or promptly call a lead. So having a team environment within a shared resource is really helpful because you're going to have better coverage. You're going to have more resources available, so you'll never miss anything. And then it's also a lot less expensive than having full-time employees. For us, the way it's less expensive is you have that coverage. So you have people there during all the hours that you might have to pay someone hourly, but you're only accruing a billable time when we're working for you. So in the shared environment, you kind of get the best of both. Well, and I think uh, you pointed two things. One, sick days, right? What if your person is sick? Like or then quits. you, yeah, or quits. It's like, I ain't doing this anymore, you know, because that happens. But that's one. But then second part um, that made me think was, um, oh, you said it now. I, what was it? Oh, training. You didn't say training, but like actually having to train that person. Now you have to take time to train them and take time out of your own busy day. Whereas like for you guys, you guys, y'all know, y'all worked with home services long enough that you've got a great idea on how to get up to speed with your calls and stuff. So whereas yeah. training would take a fraction of the time um, and then it's cross train across everybody else. Right. And then, so next thing you know, like it's to me, that's, that, that's a no brainer for me. If I'm a business owner and I really want to actually scale and, and convert if I'm spending dollars on marketing. Um, so I think that's great. Um, so as far as, Framework, let's say, let's say you can't afford or you're not going to outsource whatever you're, you're coming in in house. What's a great framework to train somebody on like a customer service rep when they get so like that initial call, like what should, what should they think about greeting, sure. how to direct them in what direction, what kind of questions to ask, how do you develop a framework when you train your own CSRs? So we have really streamlined processes. We have templates and software to support them and we guide the conversational flow. What I would consult a business owner to do if they were hiring and training someone in-house is first off, you have to hire the right person. Um, you can't just get anybody with a pulse that's willing to show up because personality and that connection and the representation of your business is so important. I can't tell you how many people I interview and don't hire or people that we bring into training and we let go within the first couple of weeks because they don't fit our culture, which means that they're not going to represent our clients the way that they deserve. So our goal in our company is to hire people that you'd want to steal for yourself. Like if you don't want them full time, then they're not good enough for us. Um, and then we just respectfully request that you don't. <laughs> but, um, but hiring, it's important to have your processes. So people need a guideline. They need to start with some kind of script so that they have a framework of how to speak to a customer. You don't necessarily want people to wing it because you don't know what their experience is, what they do or don't know. And you really should take nothing for granted. So it's important that they understand the service you provide, the problem you solve, what your process is, what the customer experience is gonna look like. So if the 
staff representing your business understands the customer journey, then they can answer questions, they can calm anxiety, they can breed confidence within the conversation so that the homeowner feels that they've made the right choice in choosing your company. So not just teaching them the front end of how to book an appointment, they have to be prepared with FAQs. They have to be prepared and understand the process. Like I would really walk them through a whole cycle of the job. Okay. Somebody calls in, this is, we book them for an estimate. When we go to the estimate, this is what we do. We diagnose their system. We see if the filters, if it's HVAC have been changed. We see how dirty it is. We check the age and they walk them through the process. If it's a painting estimate, Estimate. We look at the square footage. We look how high the ceilings are. Do we need to put scaffolding in? Um, how many guys do we need? You know, just is there a lot of detail work? Is are we going to replace the baseboards? Just whatever it is for that uh, service that that contractor is providing. I feel that if the front office person needs to understand the whole picture, so that when they're asked these questions, they can understand lead time on a job. Um, how, how, you know, any materials, how many guys are going to be coming in, what they can expect, what amount of disruption. For example, we recently got our floors redone and I was like, well, how dusty is it really going to be? How disruptive? How many days do I have to be off the floor once you seal it? And so having the person that I'm talking to know the answers to those questions makes me believe that I'm with a, the right company and it, it sets me at ease and I feel mm -hmm very confident in my decision to move forward with you. Um, what you don't want is someone who can book a, an appointment but can't answer any questions and you feel like they don't even know what the company does. So then how are you gonna feel comfortable with that experience? So I would really fully train them on the process of what your business model is and how things are gonna work. Um, so they should feel comfortable and then they should have a script of qualifying questions. We have a lot of contractors that have a, a criteria, like not every customer is a good fit for them. We have painters that don't want to do less than a certain amount of square footage. It's just not worth it for them to show up. So we have to qualify people and find out how much, uh, how many rooms they're looking to have painted. Or there are certain um, contractors that won't do a job under a certain price point. So we have to just be mindful of that so that we're not wasting their time sending them to estimates for jobs that they don't even want. And so we really are the gatekeepers of our client's time. And you want your front office person to do the same. You want them to understand your day, travel time, wasted time, ideal customers, bad customers, people you don't want to do business with because everybody has some of those. And, you know, um, so they should be able to identify a good job versus not a good job and, and really make those determinations in the gray area when appropriate. Um, and then, of course, they should be uh, savvy with the schedule. They should be mindful of not wasting travel time. They should be mindful of the <clears throat> flow of the day, who to put where. And so, um, it is a lot to train an employee and it's a huge investment in time. And you also have to know it for yourself. You know, some guys are great at what they do. They're great electricians, but they don't know customer service to teach it. So, you know, you have to do that legwork to figure out the best process. Talk to other people in your circle that might be better at it than you and get guidelines so that you have a framework to train people. Um, and the first like top tier criteria, the most important thing is that they believe in your company and are going to represent it with a great attitude. Like they have to be happy to work there. Your culture has to be one that nurtures them and feeds them. So it's not just something that they're clocking in, clocking out, getting through the day because it, you know, people, if they don't love their job, if they don't feel good about it, if they're not excited about it, they're just not going to do you any favors. You're going to be paying someone to give you bad reputation. Let me ask you this. Do you guys, um, it's a plug for you, I guess. Do you guys train businesses and people in-house? Y'all, or you just focus on the call center side? Meaning, do we consult other businesses on how to train their staff? Yeah. 
Uh, no, not at this time. No. We consult our clients in all facets of their business because we look at every relationship as a partnership. So when we get brought on for our call center services, we are now partnered with you. And that's the way we look at it. So because we are the front end communication, we're constantly giving feedback on if they're marketing the type of leads, um, you know, feedback from customers and basically being that channel of communication to connect them to everything else that supports their business. So we're constantly giving suggestions and feedback about best practices, feedback from customers, ways that they could do better with software, automation, streamline their calendars, increase efficiency. And, um, and we do that all the time really outside of the scope of actually answering the calls because we have so many years of experience in business dealing with so many facets of business, we're able to consult. But in terms of just training staff to, to work full-time in other businesses, we don't, um, we don't do that. Uh, we just pour into our staff all the time. No, no, I, I just curious. I didn't, I yeah. didn't know if that was a thing or not, or if it's something you're expanding into because you guys are, you're so good at it. But then again, like, you know, to me, I guess why make that pivot? Cause it's not really there. You, I, to me, I, I, when, when I worked with y'all, it was like, I didn't have to worry about that aspect and the clients yeah. we had, we didn't have to worry about it either. I was like, cool, this is off my plate. Yeah. And you guys communicate so well back about things that are going on and didn't have to worry about it. So um, getting into, before we get into, well, let me ask this one question before we get into CRMs and, and, and scheduling and stuff. Cause I think that's important. We were talking about automations and, and we'll go in that in a second. On on terms of time on call, yeah. okay, how how long how long they're actually on that call, whether it's booking the appointment, answering the questions, mm -hmm. like because I don't want to be in a call for thirty minutes to get an appointment booked. No, right. yeah, there's what? absolutely a sweet spot. Um, for us, we're very sensitive about time. We bill for time, so we're very sensitive about time. But also, I do believe that um, if you're oh, training your in-house staff they have to be conscientious of the time just for efficiency in the workday. Because if you were talking about the weather and talking and just wasting time in an inefficient conversation, you're now not available for the next call. So you're not doing your job. Um, you have to be organized and people generally want the business to take control of the conversation. People don't necessarily know what your process is what to ask for and what to say. So a lot of times they'll ask for price or they'll just state their problem. You know, my AC is not cooling in my house or, um, you know, my, my toilet's leaking or whatever their problem is. And at that point, the person who's representing the business needs to take control. So they need to jump into a well-defined conversational flow so that you take the conversational burden off of the homeowner and you're now driving the ship. So you are controlling the length of the call, the content of the call, and you're basically holding their hand and taking them through the process. So um, our estimate is for a home services call, like for a con, you know, somebody coming in to do work within your house, four to six minutes. It shouldn't be longer than that because there's really nothing else to talk about. So I want to hear what your issue is. Tell me about your, if we're repairing or replacing something, tell me about the unit. How old is it or how old is your roof? What's the material? How many floors is your home? Um, whatever, you know, the, the, estimator, the sales guy needs to know to prepare for the call. We want to set him up for success. So we're getting our information from the homeowner about their project, about their needs. And then we're giving them information and pretty much preempting their questions. I like to do that a lot because we know the process and we know what they're probably going to ask. So why would I put the pressure on them to have to think about questions and decide what to ask? I already know. So I'm going to tell you. Our guy is going to get there between 12 and one. When he comes in, he's going to do a walkthrough of your, of your unit. Let's say it's an AC. He's going to test your unit for airflow. He's going to check your filters. He's going to analyze, you know, all of the things that he needs to do. So we're going to walk through those details and then we're going to diagnose if it can be fixed. We're going to make a recommendation. Either it can be fixed. This is what needs to be done. Or if it needs to be replaced, we'll talk to you about those options. But we walk them through what to expect for the whole experience. And then they are like, okay, good. Well, I know that they're gonna do a diagnosis. They're gonna give me the information. Then they're gonna give me the options so that they feel that it's gonna be a fully serviced, objective, 
report <laughs> so they can make an educated decision on that type of investment because a lot of people, you know, maybe now is not a good time to replace their unit. So what's the cheapest way to get it going for another six months before I need to replace it? And they want to know that those options are available. So it's important to set, you know, not wait for their questions, not dilly dally through it, just control the conversation, tell them what to expect, and then book a time and let them know that they'll get a conf you know, again, that's where automation comes in. We like to send a confirmation. We like to send reminders, um, put it onto the CRM, put it into the calendar. So now the tech is notified, the business owner is notified, the customer is notified, but that should not really ever take more than four to six minutes. Yeah, uh, I agree. And I agree. And I had um, not necessarily sales related, but on the phone related, I had a we were shopping insurance mm -hmm. and the guy said, it'll take 15 minutes and we can knock this out. We'll get you set up. Cool. 40 minutes later, we're still on the phone and half the time he's just chit chatting with me. And I said, you know what? Stop this all together. You've lost right. my business. Um, right. Wrong expectations. So I get yeah. it, man. So let's get into this. Uh, I want to cover two more subjects real quick with you on here. Um, one is the the CRM or the field management software, whatever people are using, whether it be Service Titan, House Call Pro, um, Jobber, yeah. you know, there's a ton of them out there. What? Uh, so how important is it that they're able to schedule the CRM, uh, whatever schedule software they're using, and make sure the automations are in place uh, how important that to the really the customer experience and as well as like increasing conversions, right? Of getting the points booked. Uh, very important. I would say it, it's extremely important. Why would you not leverage the tools that are available? Because if you've been in business long enough, you remember a time when these things weren't as easy and available as they are now. And you felt like you had to be really a, like a techie person to do it. It's so mainstream. It's so available. And the expectation from the customer is that it's going to happen. I absolutely judge a company that doesn't send me a confirmation when I book an appointment. I judge them if they don't send me reminders because I need that I'm busy and I rely on it. So as much as I keep my calendar organized, I still appreciate a notification to give me a heads up that this appointment is here and it serves the business as well as the customer. It serves everybody well to have open communication. And that's the theme. The theme is organization and communication and setting expectations. And so whatever tools you can implement to support those concepts, do it. It's so easy, they're not expensive. Um, what we've always done since way back when and still is we've always worked in the client's environment. We've never asked them to change softwares or do something different than what they would normally do. So we do get a login in Service Titan, Jobber, House Call Pro, Job Nimbus, all of the softwares that contractors use, we know them. And we run through an onboarding to train because everybody uses their stuff a little bit differently, mm -hmm. but we detail the steps. And then our goal is to seamlessly integrate into the way they're already working. But I absolutely think that it's super important because we've also had clients who are like, I just go on pen and paper and they miss appointments and they're disorganized and people forget that they're, that they're coming. And it's like, why make things harder? It's already a hard world. You know, there's no reason to make it harder. So we absolutely encourage people to have technology in their business, use a CRM, use a calendar, at the very least integrate a Google calendar. And then, you know, we can implement automation um, through that, but you absolutely need to stay organized and communicative. Some of the CRMs now are so, they're so detailed, like they'll send you the location of the driver when he gets there. Yeah. Our packages do this now. Uh, especially from Amazon, your your package is 10 stops away. Take a look at where it's at. And you can see where they're at. I'm like, oh, it's up this street. I'll just drive yeah. up there and get, you know, so the, the, the crazy amount of technology for the price that you can get it for is, is amazing. And I think those contractors starting out, I think to me, two things you probably want to get in first is one, a CRM, field mm -hmm. management software, or something like that. You know, House Call Pro is fantastic to start out, yeah. I believe. Right. <laughs> um, and it's very user-friendly, great uh, user. But then second part, and this is why you obviously we brought you in was to hire somebody that can answer the phones and answer those questions. Yeah. To me, those two investments are going to be better than your marketing because you can create organic strategies. You can do all kinds of stuff, but when they get fed into the machine and they just yes. spit it right back out, you're losing money. Um, so I think those two are probably to me, I feel like those are probably two of the most important first pieces you put in business. I agree also because <clears throat> referral marketing and positive word of mouth and good reviews are the most powerful tool 
in your wheelhouse. So if you can support experiences that are going to generate referrals and good word of mouth and reviews, you've done yourself such a service and it didn't cost you anything. Like these things have to happen, but having the right person on the phone, having enough coverage, having a great experience as your standard is going to help you organically for, for no extra money, uh, grow your business. And referrals are always, always an easier sell. They're always a better experience. And then there is, you know, so much word of mouth and there's so much goodwill um, coming your way that it doesn't, it just doesn't make sense not to do it. Yep. I agree. Um, so two more questions I got for you. So one, talk about the hiring process for a moment. Cause you were talking about it earlier. I want to talk about if somebody's hiring eternally. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's what, what kind of qualifications are they looking for? Like what kind of, you know, personality, what things are they, what kind of questions are going to ask to get the, try to get the right person in? I know you can't always get it in first try, but what, what are they looking for? Yeah. So our interviews are very conversational. I, I want to see if I like you. So if you're working with somebody in your business, you have to like them. If they, you know, have a quirky personality or they just are not your flavor, then you're not going to enjoy going to work and communicating with them. You're not going to enjoy training with them. You know, so first and foremost, you have to have uh, a, a personality that you are comfortable with. And so having a conversation is going to just shed some light on who they are and if you can work with them. So um, that's, that's, I think, really important. We do hire a lot on personality. And then, of course, we, we hire on experience and making sure that the person has the right skill set. We look for a basic foundation in customer service etiquette. Like, I need you to come knowing the basics of how to speak to people, how to get accurate information, how to control the conversation, be confident and outgoing enough. Um, I don't want to have to take somebody who's an absolute like mousy introvert who doesn't like talking to people. You know, this is not the right work for you. Data entry might be more your style. So you want to make sure that they have the right personality, that you like them, that if they had similar experience, that's going to be helpful because then they can seamlessly integrate and you don't have to build their skills from the ground up. So if they've done appointment setting before, if they've done reception for similar businesses before, I do look at how long somebody stays at a company. If somebody's bouncing around every three months, then there's something going on there. That's not a great, um, that's not a great experience, you know, to want to bring into your business. If you're looking for someone long-term, I ask them about their previous employment and I see how they speak about it. If you have somebody who's management was bad in the other company. They were so disorganized. They were awful. And they were, you know, and, and I just did everything I could to make them succeed, but they were just so messed up. It was not my fault. I don't want to go anywhere near that person. I don't want to hear you bad talk your previous employers. I don't want to hear you talk about everybody else being terrible and you're the only one who knows what they're doing. So they have to have, um, you know, a good, ethic to them. And they, you know, you want to judge all of those things. So um, you also want to make sure that they have the availability for the hours that you need, that they're going to be reliable. You want to gauge their work ethic as much as possible. So there's always going to be hints. People typically tell you who they are. You just have to listen. So you definitely want to be um, aware of any red flags in that conversation. And the other thing is, is we don't hire on the spot. We do at least two interviews. We start with a Zoom interview where we kind to gauge their personality. I want to know how you speak. I want to put you on the spot and see how comfortable you are. I ask some difficult, quirky questions. I make jokes and see if they laugh because if they don't have a sense of humor, I'm not interested. So <laughs> <laughs> they don't laugh at my jokes. You don't work here. <laughs> right. Exactly. You don't think I'm fighting around. Um, so, you know, that, and then the next step is we send them for an in-person interview in the office because then my team gets to see them interact and watch and kind of like understand what we do. And then we have telltale signs to know if they're deer in headlights and they're totally overwhelmed with our pace, not a good fit. If they're engaged and they're ask, asking questions and they're trying to wrap their head around it and they're already understanding like, well, how am I going to do this job? Then we love that because now they already have a, let me get in there, you know, let me get in their coach mindset. And so that's what we look for is like an enthusiasm that will set them up for success. And it's like, you just have to point them in the right direction, but they already have that drive to do well. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. Um, so in we've got with automations, AI bots, mm -hmm. messenger, mm -hmm. all these things that are coming in. What's I, I still think people don't like the AI stuff. 
agree. It's going to have to, like, I would rather call and talk to a person. Um, but it's, there are people that do, right? There are people who are going to, I'd rather just send a messenger. I don't want to talk to somebody on the phone. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the future of virtual offices going in the next maybe two to three years? Because I think on the, just, I'm looking on the social media landscape in general, like that has changed drastically in the last 10 years. What two, iPhone came out in 2008, 2006, I don't know. And just see where we've gone from there. So where do you think the landscape's going for virtual offices? So I think that people will never be phased out. I have been in this game long enough to remember when everybody told me that answering services would be obsolete because this amazing phone tree automation where you can press one for sales and two for customer service, we're gonna take over the industry because it's so great and amazing. Well, we all know how that worked out. Mm -hmm. Everybody hates it. They ricochet back to people, answer my phone live. I wanna to talk to you right away. I don't wanna press one for English. And so, you know, where everybody said we would be replaced, it, it all came back. I think it's the same with automation, with AI. Automation has a place and I'm a huge fan of automation, like I love it. But it's not enough to replace. We use softwares that have bots, we disable the bots, but we use the other features. Bots are never going to replace people, even if they just, even as good as they might get them. And I think we're more than five or 10 years out from them being enough to, to conversationally interact with people. Um, whatever solutions they come up with on the tech side, there's always going to be a backlash and there's always going to be another realm where people are necessary. I think that nobody wants to live in the metaverse. Nobody wants to live in this disconnected world where they're only interacting with technology. We, we as humans, like other humans for the most part. And so we, we want to have, um, you know, we want to be taken care of and we want that human touch. So I feel like as much as technology has evolved, I feel like the need for human interaction has even grown um, with that. So I don't see us getting phased out. I feel that people are always going to want people involved. But what has changed in the last 10 years is we're able to decrease downtime and increase efficiency by levering, leveraging technology, mm -hmm. automation, predictive dialers, all of the AI technology on the telephony, all of the web hooks and automations and integrations that we've implemented with softwares to get the lead to us so that we can call within five minutes to update the CRM and update the spreadsheet immediately without having to manually touch it. So what I've found is that automation, integrations, AI have helped us reduce downtime and have increased efficiency because now we can spend more time having great, meaningful conversations that build relationships between the business and their customers. Mm. Mm. Relationships. That's where it comes to. Uh, and, and we talked about that before the show. It's like we, we've connected over two years ago and just, you know, on Facebook, just keep track of what we're doing and, um, and, you know, finally reconnecting again today. Um, but it's, from the relationship built two years ago. Right. And I still have people that I talk to from, you know, even my teaching days, uh, I have students I taught 15 years ago, yeah. I have families and kids in their thirties. And that goes, Oh, it makes me feel old. Um, <laughs> like, Oh my God, losing my hair. Um, and I think that the relationship part is so undervalued. And that's like, my wife is, she will sl do slow on her job as a teacher, as an educator to build the relationships with teachers first. She yeah. will do that first. Um, and, um, uh, and that's why she has so many people that love her and she does great is, is that part. So no, I agree. Adi, this has been amazing content for these people, for these contractors to understand. I don't think they really, there's a lot of them starting out and even that even have a business run. They don't understand the value of what you guys do. Um, and what, just having a CSR in place, that's going to really help provide value and, and have that first human experience, right. To be, be, be amazing. So I appreciate you coming on. Tell us, if we want to work with you, uh, if there's a contractor out there that needs to work with you, how do they get in touch with you guys? Well, thank you. And thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. I feel like we could talk for another hour, but yes. I respect the time. <laughs> um, our website is dedicatedoffice.com. On our website, right up on top, you can click talk to us and book a call directly with me. 
where I'd be happy to dive into your business, what's going on, where you feel like you could use support and see if we have a good fit um, to work together. Imagine a life where you never have to hire, train, have someone quit on you with no notice and scramble to take care of your phones and leads. Um, you know, once we connect, we always have it covered. We always have a dedicated team and staff. So easiest way is our website, dedicatedoffice.com. If you find me on Facebook, you, we have a business page too, Dedicated Office Solutions, or you can just find me personally at D. Campuzano. Happy to chat with you. And um, yeah, I appreciate this opportunity. Awesome. Yeah. And if and anybody in the community group that's on Facebook, um, you can connect with me. I can get you connected with them too as well. Um, they, they do firsthand knowledge working with them. Absolutely amazing team. They know the CRM systems. They understand how to get into them. They know how to manip manipulate them and use them. And that I can attest to personally. Um, and they've done everything from like you've named them, the, the service Titans, the house car pros, the go wow. high levels that all the marketers use. Absolutely amazing. Adi, thank you again so much. Appreciate you having me on here. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. And thank you guys again for listening to the Preferred Contractors podcast. As always, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. And of course, follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, I think we have also TikTok, which got a lot of amazing TikToks come out. And of course, Instagram as well. Follow us on all our social channels. And of course, hop into our Preferred Contractors community group on Facebook, where we have a ton of content coming out on marketing, business development, sales, virtual office training, things like that, that you need to help grow your contracting business. So thank you guys again for listening. Until next time.